Spring continues to slowly arrive here in the Pacific Northwest, with a few sunny days and breezes carrying the sweet scent of magnolia or cherry blossom. Today I wanted to take you along with me on an absolutely lovely spring day at home. I wanted to share with you a few things I like to do at the beginning of new seasons, to be inspired and prepare for the months ahead so that I might make the most of it. I hope you will enjoy this video and hope a little bit of magic finds its way to you through it. One thing I love to do in my studio space is change up the artwork on my gallery wall to match the current season. My work is very much seasonally inspired and so having artwork from my favorite artists in my workspace is very inviting and cultivates a motivational space to create in.
Another thing I love to do each month is create a mood board and bucket list for the current season. I am such a visual person, and so to put together a whole collage with imagery that sparks joy, magic, and whimsy for each season is something I so much enjoy and currently have as my laptop screensaver, so I'm inspired every time I look at it. Creating a seasonal bucket list is also a fun thing to do and helps you create and dream ideas for things to do that maybe are a tradition or maybe something you've yet to try. Both of these things are actually something I've shared with my patrons and they are able to download them and use them throughout the spring season. If that is something you would like to have access to, you can sign up to our cozy community in the description box below. Spring and summer are some of my favorite seasons as I get to wear my favorite dresses every single day. I have quite the growing collection and I think I need to say I have way too many, but I wanted to share them with you as I always get comments and messages asking me where I shop or where certain dresses are from. They will all be linked below as well. Another thing I love to do each season is bake with a little seasonal flair. Today I decided to make funfetti cupcakes with cream cheese frosting and decorated with chamomile flowers.
Well, it has been quite some time since I shared a bit from my children's book collection, and I rather enjoyed sharing them seasonally. So, in today's video I thought it would be perfect to share some of my favorite spring children's books that I have collected over the years. Like previous videos, I'll try to keep it brief and just share the title, author and illustrator, as well as uh, the little back summary, if it has one. So, our first book to debut is The Spring Story in the Brambley Hedge series by Jill Barklam. These stories are absolutely lovely, full of whimsy, and beautifully illustrated by Jill Barklam. She's created an entire world called Brambley Hedge that follows all of these mice families um, that live together in a little community, and they are just the sweetest stories, and perfect as she has one for each season. Next is The Meaning of Flowers, with Flower Fairies by Cecily Mary Barker. She is the queen of flower fairies, and this little book is just a collection of all different types of species of flowers and trees and all sorts of flora, and the illustrations are absolutely stunning and will inspire you to go outside and try to find your own flower fairies. Next is uh, a little chapter book. I have yet to read this one. This one is called Heartwood Hotel Better Together by Callie George and illustrated by Stephanie Gregan. Spring has come to Fernwood Forest and with Mr. Heartwood off on vacation, it's up to Mona and the rest of the staff to keep the hotel running smoothly. When rumors buzz of a rival lodge, they're determined to prove that Heartwood is the very best by putting on an elaborate spring splash. With the contest in full swing, Mona starts to feel unsure of her place when newcomer Henry assists with some splashy new ideas of his own. But soon there's more to worry about. Some decidedly invited guests have been drawn to the festivities. Can Mona find a way to save everyone from danger? Next up is More Than a Little, written by M. H. Clark and illustrated by Cecile Metzger. The back says, I more than a little appreciate you and the person you are and the things that you do. This is just a lovely, encouraging little book, something that would be perfect to give a loved one. It's beautifully illustrated. I love the color palette, and it's just a beautiful keepsake. Next is Backyard Fairies by Phoebe Wall. Where can you find a fairy? Fluttering through the treetops, crouching beneath a toadstool, peeking out from a patch of daisies? A young girl explores the woods behind her house in search of these elusive creatures. The forest shimmers with magic as she searches, and even though the fairies keep flitting out of sight, keen-eyed readers will spot them on every page. Next is a beautiful book called The Secret Fawn by Callie George and Ellie McKay. On a soft golden morning, a little girl goes in search of a deer. Is that the deer behind the apple trees? No. Is that the deer drinking from the pond? No. She listens. Nothing. And then she looks. What's that? Over there, hidden in the bushes. It's not what she's been looking for, but it's something even more special. Next is called Margaret's Unicorn by Brioni May Smith. Have you ever dreamed about finding a lost baby unicorn? In this magical picture book, that is exactly what happens to a girl named Margaret when she discovers a young unicorn by the sea. I absolutely love the illustrations inside this book. The artist's colors and the way that she is able to draw light is absolutely beautiful and so inspiring. Next is more of an educational book called Up in the Garden and Down in the Dirt by Kate Messner with art by Christopher Silas Neal. This book follows a garden throughout the year and shows what happens above the ground and the magic that happens underneath as well. Next is called Fern and Otto, a story about two best friends by Stephanie Gregan. Fern and Otto are best friends who venture deep into the forest looking for an exciting story there, they find a girl in a red cape, three pigs arguing about a house, a dish running away with a spoon, and much more. But is excitement what these two best friends really need? 
a beautiful book about appreciating the little things in life. Next is one of my all-time favorite children's books. It is called The Tree Keepers by Gemma Kuman, who is one of my favorite artists. At the edge of the woods, there is a great tree. Peep through the branches and you might just see some little people who stand as tall as your thumb and have heads the size of hazelnuts. It is an absolutely charming book and beautiful story, and of course, gorgeous artwork. Lastly, the final book I wanted to share is called If You Go Down to the Woods Today in Brown Bear Wood, More Than a Hundred Things to Find. Poems by Rachel Piercy and illustrated by Freya Hartis. My woodland's full of animals of every different kind, so shall we stay here for a while and see what we can find? Experience the everyday wonder of nature in the first book of poetry, exploring magical woodland. Join Bear on his journey through a year with lots of friends to meet, places to explore, and things to spot along the way. Freya's illustration is absolutely beautiful and so inspiring, and it is just full of so many wonderful characters and highlights the beauty of the woodland forest so much. Well, that is my little spring collection of children's books I wanted to share with you, and I hope some of them inspire you and maybe you want to go check one out from the library or pick one up yourself at a local bookstore. Mm -hmm.